Hey what's up guys, Nate Jeff from Protoculture, welcome back to another Sonic Academy video and today we're checking out a brand new tool from Excite Audio, I believe it's developed in conjunction with the guys from Noisia. It's called Vision 4X, it's an analyzer with some pretty cool tricks up its sleeve, let's dive in, we're going to take a look. Right, so got a little project that I've started in uh, Bitwig. We're going to take a look at Vision 4X. This is the interface in its default state. Let's take a look at what it's doing quickly. And there you have it. So the first thing that you're going to see, uh, what's interesting about this is the inclusion of a spectrogram in this analyzer. It's not something that I've seen a lot, uh, real-time spectrograms uh, at least, in uh, analyzer plugins that I've used in the past. You may see this a lot in stuff like uh, Isodup RX or Spectralayers from Steinberg. Uh, Cubase also has a spectrogram included in its um, Supervision plugin now as well, but it's not that common to see this in uh, a lot of the sort of uh, analyzers that everybody's using. If you're not familiar with a spectrogram, one of the real benefits that you have with this is two typical things that you would normally see in analyzers an oscilloscope or a wave scope, such as this you have down at the bottom here, and then also a frequency analyzer like this on the right-hand side, which this has both of. Uh, but the downsides to using either one of these is that a frequency analyzer pretty much just shows you gain uh, against frequencies. Whereas a wave scope, on the other hand, is going to be showing you gain over time. Now, the benefit of a spectrogram is you actually get all three of those components all uh, lumped into one visual display. Now, the way you read this, obviously, the time metric is read horizontally like this. The frequency metric is read vertically up like this, all the way from 9 hertz here right up to whatever, how many, probably 20 kilohertz or something. And then the way that you measure the gain is by the density of the colors displayed in the spectrogram. So more dense uh, collection of colors is going to be a higher gain of those frequencies, and the darker it gets, the less of that uh, volume is going to be in that specific frequency. Now, there's a couple of reasons why this is a fantastic tool to use when you are turning towards an analyzer to check things in your project. I'm going to get to that in a second. We're first going to dive and just take a look at the interface and the settings that you can change for Vision 4X. So to access that, you just click on this little settings icon down at the bottom. It brings up this panel here for you. We've got some presets here. Some of these are developed by the Noisier guys. We'll just flick through a few of these quickly. So see a bunch of different setups that you've got going on there. I'm gonna just revert back to the initialized one quickly and set it up for us from here. So looking at the general tab, you've got a, a source mode. Uh, so you can basically analyze the mids, sides, left, right, so on. Uh, this is a nice little feature as well, this listen uh, section. If you have this set to mid, for example, it'll actually output audio from this. So now you have just the mid actually coming through your speakers as well. Most analyzers won't do that. This one actually allows you to actually preview uh, that mid band as well, which is a really nice little thing to have. Rotate will simply rotate the graphs around so you can focus on other elements. And the trigger mode will actually allow you to input a MIDI input into this so you can uh, reset the uh, uh, analyzer on a MIDI input trigger as well. So let's go look down at the time. So overlay, this is another really cool little feature and something that's often missing in analyzers for me quite often. Uh, you do have this in uh, something like the uh, Oscillus Megascope that I use quite often. Whereby if you have overlay turned off, it's constantly regenerating like this the whole time. Like you would scroll into your range page, for example. If you turn overlay on, it actually resamples a loop each time. So you'll see it will run through and start from the beginning again. Now this is really handy when you have the sync turned on because now you can choose something like a quarter beat, for example. And it's just to make this a little bit more apparent, we'll solo the drums quickly. And we have a multiplier on now as well, so we're getting two quarter beats here. We could just go to one if we want to do that. And now we have everything being displayed just in those quarter beats. The spectrum, we can tune how this is going to work. So this is really handy if you want to kind of focus down on something, for example. So let's uh, play around with these. 
change the sensitivity for the gain. And we can also change the range of the frequency. So we can come right down into the subs here if you want. Take a look at those. Now moving further down as well, you can also change the color maps. I personally like this heat map, kind of like predator vision almost, but uh, I find this one's the most descriptive for me. So you see, this is also kind of blurry currently because uh, we're in an all round mode. You can get a harmonics, which will really kind of highlight the harmonics like of this kick, for example. Play some synth parts, especially, you'll really kind of start highlighting those harmonics in those uh, sounds that you're playing through this as well. And zoom back out again. We've also got a transient mode, which will be a lot more detailed. So you can really kind of see those hats kind of coming in there. And then you can also adjust the curve and the bias of this. Just take a look at this. Having been more sensitive to low or higher frequencies, you can adjust the bias here to just kind of make that more sensitive to the tops. Now the next section, uh, this pertains to the bar graph, which is with this one on the right hand side here. Yeah, we can go and rotate this to bring the bar graph into the middle. So I've currently got this set up to uh, inherit the color scheme from this. You can turn that off and just have a bar graph as is. On will just give you a sort of uh, grayscale visualization and map. We'll bring that back up again. You can set up the speeds here how sensitive you want this to be, how many bars you want. You can kind of go right up to a full frequency analyzer there as a line graph and back down. I find this quite useful as well to have less sometimes just to see where the weight is of a track. Now this is another really cool feature and it's something quite similar to what you find in uh, tonal balance control from Isotope. And it's basically a collection of averages from different genres of music. Uh, that they've added in here. So you can go in here, select a reference material. I uh, will probably go with the house for this, I think, house or techno, I guess. And it'll bring up a sort of average area for a uh, mix basically taken from a bunch of tracks that they've kind of averaged out. And this is kind of a guideline as to where you should be aiming to get your frequencies for a full mix. Uh, we can turn the drums back off again. So we've got the full mix there. We can take a look at whether we're hitting those. This is not mixed yet, but it's pretty close to where you want to be. Maybe just roll off a little bit on the bottom here. And probably some more in the mids. Um, definitely could bring out some more mids there if you're following this guideline, yeah. But really nice and handy just to kind of uh, point you in the right direction and just to give you a reference whether you're hitting the mix in the right place. Right, so we'll just rotate back to the spectrogram again. And lastly, we're just gonna look at the waveform settings down at the bottom. This is your wave scope down here. You can adjust the headroom. You can also put the highlight from the map on this one as well. And then the VU speed down at the bottom here, yeah, basically the speed of the VU meters as well. Uh, you also note down at the bottom, we've got a stereoscope as well, which is another nice thing to have there. And just phase correlation as well. You can see our phase is all fine. There's the phase correlation down at the bottom here. Yeah. So one other thing as well that uh, is often missing in analyzer suites, which I have to give kudos to Excite Audio for putting in, is actually including a standalone version. It doesn't just come as a VST plugin. There's a standalone version as well that you can basically run outside of the DAW. So you could be using this to check mixes in a DJ set or whatever, any software that you want. You can run that and read it through this. You could have this on an external monitor somewhere if you want outside of the DAW without having to open the, the plugin all the time. Um, I really think that's a, you know, a must for any analyzer suite that you're going to buy. There should be a separate standalone version and they have included it in this suite. Which I think is great. So like I said, there's a couple of reasons why I think that this is a great tool to have in your arsenal. One being looking at your mix and looking for conflicts. It's very, very easy to spot problems with uh, a spectrogram like this. If we bring this up, for example, our drums again. Now I do have EQs and stuff in here, so this shouldn't be too much of a problem with this mix. But I want to just demonstrate how easy it is for you to see problems uh, when it comes to uh, finding clashes. If you play this back now, 
if you were looking at this down at the bottom in a typical wave scope, there's no real way that you can determine whether these hats, for example, have been low cut high enough in the spectrum to leave space for everything else. Uh, you can do that here, but you can't really determine which sections of this are specifically the hats. When you're looking at the spectrogram, for example, you can very clearly see on these quarter notes here that these are the hats. And if you have stuff in this region, for example, and you feel that these hats are not uh, cut enough, you can immediately tell that this needs to be high passed a little bit more. It's very, very quick and it's very, very easy to see. The other problem that I'm picking up here straight away is because we have this loop now as well. I know that this is four sixteenths in this beach here and I know that my kick is gonna be too long because I can see immediately that there's too much of this stuff here. So I can go in and rectify that pretty quickly. Just come in here. And we can just reduce the decay on the sample. Now you can see pretty clearly that the majority of that frequency is sitting around here in that first beat and it sort of tails off into this section. Uh, we can bring back the bass as well here. Yeah. And that's looking a lot better to me now as well. So yeah, like I said, very quick and easy to just spot these these problems. Uh, you can then just play around with the curves, for example, kind of even highlight things further. And then again, if you were just looking at the bass and the kick, we could uh, we can also just reduce the the range of the dBs, for example, and focus everything down at the bottom there, so we can really kind of see what's going on. Right, another example that I want to just look at here quickly, I'm just bringing another kick. So that's very clean, uh, you can see there's not really much going on there aside from that sub. Um, but I'm just bringing something a little bit dirtier here quickly. So you can see there's a little bit of stuff going on here. And uh, this is another thing I really like about this is it's got great measurement functions as well. You can see every time I'm hovering over the uh, display, uh, I'm getting a little readout down at the bottom. So I can see uh, around 148 hertz this section here, and it's even giving me the key readout there, uh, which is D2, and it's giving me the volume there too. So you can see as well, if I go down here, I can see kind of where my peak sub is hitting, negative 16 currently. So that's super handy to know. Now this doesn't really stand out that much, but um, let's say for example, um, if I was doing this in Oryx, uh, you could normally just paint this over. But having the spectrogram kind of gives you the tools to see and make decisions as to how to get rid of something like this little uh, buildup that we have here. Um, I put in an EQ, for example, and uh, I'll just duplicate this EQ first and um, just remove this modulator that I have here. So I've done a cut here now. And it's getting rid of this that I wanted to get rid of here, but it's kind of killed the kick as well. With this, you can kind of see the time display as well. So you can very easily make informed decisions as to how to negate that using tools outside of a spectral editor like RX9. Uh, so what I've done here is I've just added in a envelope that's being triggered by the kick to kind of make this EQ dynamic. This envelope is now pushing that up at the beginning here and judging from the spectrogram that we have there, you can kind of get this back in here and look at the spectrogram and actually see what you're cutting out. You'll see a lot more of that 140, 150 is coming through now. Drag that back and we still got all the punch in the kick but we've taken out a lot of this here now as well without kind of destroying the kick too much. So it's just kind of, it's, it's a really good guide uh, to making these kind of edits in the spectral domain without having to actually jump into something like RX, an external wave editor or spectral layers from Steinberg, for example. So yeah, that covers the basics of this. And like I said, a spectrogram really is a fantastic way to look at audio. It just gives you so much information in one space and really does make things just pop out and allow you to make decisions really, really quickly. We'll just take a look at one or two more presets. Jump into the master, for example. Just 
check the side focus. And you can hear that listen kick in there for that. Again, this is a great way to to check uh, what frequencies are in your sides. Uh, at the end of a master, I don't really want too much of the low end stuff in my sides. If I bring in a plugin like BX Digital, for example, now, uh, we can make sure that we're getting rid of all this stuff here in the sides very easily, and we'll just dial in the mono maker. And there you go. You can instantly see in Vision 4X that you're not getting any of that stuff in the low end. That's probably a little bit high. You'd want to be down at about 100 there. But I'm assured now that that is all completely mono. If we look at the mids. That's all mono material there. And on top of that, our phase correlation meter is working perfectly. There's no anti-phase going on there at all. Last one, let's take a look at the transient focus as well. You can really kind of see everything happening in the tops there. And I should also just point out here, you can see with some of these synth leads coming in here, you can actually see the harmonics. If we jump over to harmonic mixing as well, this should be more apparent as well. You can see these lines here, that's typically harmonics in these synth parts that are coming out. And obviously with the highlighting carry th carrying through into the uh, uh, frequency analyzer here, makes it really apparent where these are too, which is a really nice addition to have. Cool, so I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. I was pretty impressed with this. I think it's a really, really useful analyzer to have uh, the fact that it comes as a standalone, the spectrogram, pretty unique. I uh, haven't seen this in a lot of analyzers and there are plenty of tools and settings in here for you to tweak this just the way you want. Save it as a preset and bring that up for any occasion when you are mixing down your tracks. Go check this one out. This is going to stay in my plugin list for a while. I really like this one. Anyways, I'll see you guys soon at Sonic Academy. Till then, take care. Cheers.